So you might remember a while back that I made a video letting you guys know that DICE were going to change Suez. Based on community feedback, the team decided to take the map back into testing and development, rework it, and at some point launch an improved version of the map. Now there have been a few updates made whilst it's been in the CTE for testing, but nothing really substantial so far. However, I think we've now reached a point where I can give you enough of an update to make it into a proper video. So let's see what you think about these changes. The first, and probably the most major change that they've made, is DICE has added an extra flag into the mix. One of the main problems of Suez on Conquest was that the flag layout was far too linear. And at this moment in time, it still is because it hasn't changed in the main game yet. And there wasn't enough cover to flank down the sides of these flags either. This could lead to one team seizing control of a majority of the flags early on and holding out for the win and without really needing to do much else than suppress enemies behind what little cover they actually had. The new flag, called Road, sits in the centre of the map alongside the old sea flag location which has now been moved outside a little bit and you've got two flags that sit either side of each other. So instead of a five flag layout, we now have six flags on Suez. This additional flag breaks up the pure linear setup that we had before, and it creates this central zone that has four flags within it. Two of them in either side of the dune, one in one part of the town and one in the other, and now we have the road flag and the new sea flag as well. By design, this was made to encourage a bit more movement across the map rather than up and down the map all the time. And it stops people, or it's designed to stop people, getting stuck in that deadlock all the time with the enemy team. The new road flag sits behind the large sand dune that breaks up line of sight between the two sections of the town, with the old sea flag location moving to the large house on the other side of the dune. Now the capture radius of the new sea flag location is massive. DICE's next move was to allow the behemoth to have a proper effect on the gameplay of the map. And here, it now does that. Here on Suez, before these changes, the behemoth couldn't actually interact with any of the flag zones along the train track, but now it can. And this gives the losing side a little bit more hope of being able to brute force their way back into the game, providing it isn't already too late. Now on top of this additional flag and the move of the old sea flag location to a new one, DICE has recently introduced some vehicle changes to the map as well. One thing they felt is that players didn't have the right tools to break out of the deadlock that happens almost every single time you play this map on Conquest. The limited cover made infantry breakouts almost impossible and the behemoth not having any direct impact on flags meant it couldn't capture one for the pinned in team so that they can spawn at it and then move out from there. As a possible solution to this, DICE has added more transport vehicles to the map to allow teams to move faster from flag to flag or even use them to flank right round the edges of the map and capture a point deep into enemy territory. The hope here with more vehicles is that that alone will break the lock more often in each round that gets played on this map and it will allow for a comeback to occur if one team was getting locked in. Honestly, I feel like we need more transport vehicles on every single map in the entire game. We have way less than we ever did in Battlefield 1 and I'm aware a lot of the maps are smaller than Battlefield 4 1 so they might not be necessary but moving faster from point to point might also aid in stopping the Zerg mentality. Zerging is basically large groups of infantry running in massive groups from flag to flag. If you give more players options, like transport vehicles, other than just running around, you might find that gameplay varies a lot more than it currently does during Conquest. Now DICE hasn't stated if these are going to be the final updates to Suez before it's put back into the main game so that we can play the updated version, but do these fixes at the moment really help improve the map at all? Well, it's still a linear layout, the two new flags in the middle don't come out too far from the linear system that was built previously, and not a huge amount more space is actually utilised in this setup. 
Because the map is still inherently linear in its design, it's always going to get stagnated as two teams sort of clash in the middle and then fight a stalemate. And that is until one team pushes through and maybe captures some more points or just turns it round and captures all the points and ends the game really quickly. But having those two central objectives side by side does at least split the focus 50-50 between the two flags because one team could hold one and the other team could hold the other and then you have this battle going a different way across the map instead of up and down it you're going across the map a little bit as well having played only a couple of rounds on the CTE with this flag set up it doesn't make a huge amount of difference though you're still focusing the action in that center of the map which is where the action was before anyway and the two points are only about sort of 60 to 80 meters apart it is an improvement for sure but i feel like more could have been done overall they could have added more cover between these two points they could have added more cover to the brow of the massive sand dune that separates the two sections of the map perhaps they could have added a few extra buildings spreading out into that empty space to the north and the south of the map towards the canal and the large sand dunes but as i said in my last video it seems that dice won't be making any of these larger structural changes changes will just be limited more to the mechanics that currently sit on the map like the flag locations the capture radius etc anything that requires a remodel of this map is essentially off the table and i think that's a really big shame because this map is inherently flawed and i think it needs a proper redesign in regards to the vehicles yes they do help break the deadlock and it's nice to be able to traverse the map a little bit quicker but i can't help but think if dice are unwilling to redesign this map properly then the only other surefire way to fix Suez is to implement a different conquest system. Battlefield 1 introduced a new conquest rule set, and that was much to the surprise of most players, including myself. I didn't expect them to change the conquest system, not when it's worked for about 15 years beforehand. It definitely has some flaws, the older system, but I feel it's much better than the one that's in the game right now. Just to quickly explain, in Battlefield 1, the number of flags you hold determines how fast your own team score ticks up to 100. In the older system, you had this tug of war mechanic which only bled the tickets of the team who held less flags. So it was only one team doing damage to someone else's score, not both teams incrementing their own score at the same time. It doesn't sound hugely different, but it actually makes a big difference. Kills in this new system and the old system both count towards the score as well. So in the old system, if you killed a player on the enemy team, their score would tick closer to zero. In the new system, if you kill a player on the enemy team, your score ticks up to 1000. The new system, however, just removed the tug of war mechanic because both teams can affect the score, rather than the team in the lead affecting the score, which to me always made more sense. CTE for testing would be a big step forward for DICE on Suez because the older system actually put emphasis on you defending the flags that you held, as well as attempting to take new ones. Battlefield 1 system directly encourages this continuous zerging around that I mentioned earlier because there's no penalty involved if you lose a flag, because by the time you've lost one, you've already taken another one, and both teams are always counting up towards a thousand i think if dice were to introduce the older conquest system into battlefield one the effect it would have on suez specifically would greatly improve the map because that fifth flag in the middle would become the tug of war zone whoever held the third flag whilst the other team only had two they would have control of the score but when it changed hands the score would sort of tick backwards and forwards and you'd have a much more i don't know exhilarating experience as opposed to just running around the map and capturing as many objectives as you possibly can but anyway so yes i think they have made some good changes to suez but i still maintain that if they wanted to properly get this map right they will need to do a full redesign but as we've been told many times before that's completely off the table whether these improvements actually translate into improvements remains to be seen because it hasn't been tested with a huge amount of public playtime yet 
and certainly on the CTE it will continue to be tested until DICE feel it's ready and I'll bring you more and more updates as and when I can if they make any more changes. But thanks very much for watching, let me know what you think of all these changes down below in the description and let me know what you think of Suez in general. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.